Hi, Julie Thompson from PAC TV, um, and we're going to be hosting today a COVID-19 update for the town of Kingston. We'll hold these forums every Tuesday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Watching Kingston on Comcast Channel 15 and Verizon Channel 42, or watch online on our streaming channel by visiting pactv.org slash live. To ask questions during this forum, email them to kingstoninfo at pactv.org. And for the forum replay schedule and additional Kingston meeting coverage, please visit pactv.org slash Kingston. Today's participants include Josh Warren, who's the chair of the Kingston Board of Selectmen, Kathy Lenatra, state representative, Adam Hatch, deputy fire chief, and Sue Woodworth, recreation director. So over to you, Josh. Julie, thank you for uh, for hosting another forum, um, and a big thanks to everybody at PAC TV who um, who continues to support uh, Kingston's efforts and all of their town's efforts to uh, communicate to residents uh, throughout the COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, another thanks to uh, State Rep Lenatra for joining us, Deputy Chief uh, Adam Hatch, and Sue Woodworth from the Rec Department for joining us. Um, I, I look forward to speaking with you guys uh, over the next 45 minutes or so, but just a couple of quick updates. Um, yesterday afternoon, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health uh, announced that there were 1,507 confirmed positive cases of COVID-19 in Plymouth County. That was an increase of 180 from the previous day. Um, the town of Kingston remains at 10 confirmed positive cases. Um, and that that number, um, you know, has has remain relatively low over the last week or so. We were at nine um, for, for over a week and, and again two days ago. Uh, we're notified by the VNA um, that our numbers had increased by one. Um, earlier this week, the Executive Office of Health and Human Services announced that they launched a nursing home family resource line. Uh, that's a dedicated phone line um, for family members of nursing home and rest home residents. Um, anybody who wants information regarding um, the care of their loved ones uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic are encouraged to reach out to that hotline. Um, they're open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., seven days a week. Again, this is an initiative uh, being led by the Commonwealth. Um, we've linked to the Nursing Home Resource Hotline on the Town of Kingston's website, um, but I'll just give the phone number right now. Um, it's 617-660-5399. Again, that's 617-660-5399, and we've linked that to the town's website. Um, we certainly encourage everybody to, to monitor the town of Kingston's website, www.kingstonmass.org, for daily updates from Kingston's emergency management team and for uh, helpful information from the CDC and Mass Department of Public Health. We've provided links to both websites there. Um, and with that, I will, uh, I'll, I'll jump over to you, Adam, uh, who is joining us from the firehouse. Um, Adam, how are things going at the fire station? So far, so good, Josh. Um, seen a slight increase in our call volume, but as you said, we still remain at 10. So the majority of the responses that we're doing, our, our typical responses would be doing if everything was, was normal, as it were. And in, in the last week or so, have you seen any influx in COVID-19 related calls or it's really been sort of status quo in terms of the, the calls that you're receiving? It's, it's been pretty status quo. You may get one or two here uh, suspected, but for the most part, as I said, it's the normal range of calls that, that would be doing if everything was normal times. And, and the last time we had you on, we talked about um, a serious concern regarding the availability of personal protective equipment or PPE. Um, where do things stand now in regards to um, access to PPE for Kingston's first responders? Well, we, we've been able to uh, acquire some, again, through donations through some citizens in town, um, also through MEMA, um, Mass Emergency Management, dropped off um, some gowns and some masks last week. But again, um, any donations would be welcome uh, we never know day to day uh, what volume of incidents we'll be responding to with regards to COVID. So better to be more prepared um, than not prepared at all. So if anybody has anything they're willing to, to donate, uh, we'd be more than happy to accept it. And we're still working with MEMA on a weekly basis um, to get more uh, supplies as needed. And, and just to take the opportunity, some of the uh, organizations that have donated PPE over the last week, um, Silver Lake Regional School District, 
um, took a vote uh, among their school committee and, and they voted unanimously to donate uh, PPE that they had to um, each of the communities um, that their students hail from. Um, and so sure, Votech, I, I heard also uh, actually fabricated some, some face shields for you guys. Yes, they fabricated um, some plastic reusable face shields for us. Um, two of our members are uh, graduated from South Shore Votech over the last several years. And um, through their contacts, we're able to get their uh, fabrication uh, students to make these for us. These are ones that uh, have a plastic shield that folds down almost like a welder's mask um, that are able to be reused. So once we use them in the back of the ambulance, we can decontaminate them, wipe them down and put them back in service. So that was a huge, huge donation for us. That's great, that's great. And and I, I know the ins and outs of, of um, how we're now getting PPE from MEMA, but just so um, you know, everybody is, is sort of on the same page, um, supplies are now available at the state level that allow um, the, you and Mark to, to put in requests on a weekly basis um, to replenish stock as needed. Correct. We basically monitor what we use uh, day to day, week to week, as well as what the police need, and then put a request in based on those figures. Um, and, and another item that I, I wanted to discuss while we have you, uh, late last week, the CDC uh, changed its guidelines and recommendations for residents regarding the use of face masks. Um, you know, they've still been quite clear that the uh, N95 respirator masks really should be uh, reserved for first responders and for frontline medical workers, but now they're recommending uh, face coverings um, when social distance guidelines are uh, difficult to maintain. Can you just speak to the updated guidelines and, and um, perhaps demonstrate how to don a, uh, a medical mask? Sure. So for those that haven't seen it, and I'm sure most people have, these are the N95s that we wear in the ambulance and when we're treating a patient. They're really, really difficult to come by. Um, so as, as the guidelines say, um, you know, we reserve, try to reserve these as best you can. The simple, what we call simple surgical masks uh, look more like this. Um, they have a color on one side, they're white on the other, um, different colors. It doesn't really make a difference what the color is. It doesn't speak to what it will or won't do. But in order to put these on, there is a right, a wrong and a right way to do it. Um, so when you get them, you want to keep the colored side out. Um, at the top, there's like a metal band that we'll use to go over the bridge of your nose. And basically without touching the, touching the um, outside of the mask, they want you to put it over your nose like this, around your ears, put snug around your chin and just give it a little pinch so it fits the bridge of your nose and you're good to go. Um, and you can wear that for as little or as a uh, little bit of a time or as long as you want. When you remove it, just the opposite without touching it, just remove it this way. And CDC advises as to we that before you put them on, wash your hands real well with uh, warm soap and water or uh, Purell and then do the same after you take it off. And it's specifically, especially uh, important not to touch it when you're taking it off because Theoretically, it could be contaminated. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned the the washing of hands, um, and I, I think it's probably important to to just remind everybody watching that um, wearing a mask certainly isn't a substitute for um, you know the social distancing guidelines that we've been prescribed or the vigilant hand washing, um, and it's it's really um, a, a, an effort to do all of those things to to really protect yourself um, and those in your community from from COVID nineteen. Yeah, as we said, it's common sense and it's a simple thing that will really help in the long run. The, the masks aren't a cure-all. They're another tool in the toolbox. Uh, we always say start with the basics, and that's making sure that you know, hand hygiene, um, along with masks and social distancing, is what's really going to help. Out. Great. And, and just for everybody at home as well, um, on the town website, www.kingstonmask.org, uh, um, on the... COVID-19 page, we've linked to the CDC's guidelines for, um, for uh, donning a face cover. And, and there's, again, um, resources on how to fabricate those at home um, with household items or with um, low-cost items. So, um, Adam, any other, any other recommendations or tips for folks who, who may be going out to the grocery store or to the transfer station in terms of, um, you know, how to, how to cover their face? One of the things we've seen a lot of in the news, as I'm sure a lot of the residents have, residents have is uh, people going out to the stores with their gloves and masks on, which is fine. We'd like to see that. However, 
uh, when they're leaving, a lot of people are taking them off and they're sitting in the parking lot next to the vehicles without disposing of them properly. We haven't seen a ton of that in town, which is a testament to the people in town. Um, but we'd like to you know, reiterate that we don't want to see that. That's just adding to the problem. If you, if you have to go out and you go to your stores, when you're taking off your PPE, uh, dispose of it in a trash receptacle or, or just put it in your car when you drive home and dispose of it properly. But not on the side of the road, not in a parking lot, not on the bench, not in any of that room. Great, thank you. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop over to Kathy uh, while we have her. Um, Kathy, you've been very vocal in um, securing PPE for first responders. Um, how, how's that been going at the, uh, the state level? The same. So the departments in the district have been putting in a weekly request and they'll receiving them. And the National Guard has been out to deliver some to the towns in the 12th Plymouth district. Uh, there's been a lot of heroes, as Adam had said. Walmart had donated a, a large amount to the Halifax departments. Um, there's a, a maker space in Middleborough called Boroughbot. They too are using their 3D printers to make the masks. Um, and those are young people that do that. And I think it's wonderful. And they've recruited some other people that have 3D printers to do that. So donations from residents has been and local businesses has been amazing. It's been amazing. There is throughout the 12th Plymouth, including Kingston, there's also bins out. Um, if you wanted to just stop by and donate, I believe Adam to gloves, maybe um, anything that you think that they could use. If you're not sure, please just call those departments so you're not making a wasted trip. But people have been extremely generous in helping out our first responders. Great. And um, the the state's current stay-at-home advisory, uh, how is that? How how long is that in effect? Right now, it's in effect till May fourth. So our and, children will go back to school, hopefully then. Um, we are non-essential workers are to stay home. Um, as I live in a neighborhood here, we've been on maybe 15 minutes, have we? And I've seen 15 people walk by my house. Uh, but they are keeping social distancing. So they six feet, which because you, if you don't know what six feet are, it's two arm lengths um, to stay away. And they are requesting that you wear a mask now when you're out. Um, and, and I know one of the questions that you've probably gotten, you know, from, from uh, countless constituents at this point, um, what, what supports are available at the state level for homeowners, for renters, and for, uh, for business owners? So there's lots of bills going through now, and they're going through very rapidly for our homeowners and our renters. Right now, you cannot be evicted during this time, the COVID epidemic. Um, there are also... there. Are there's forbearance with your loan. But what I recommend is getting in touch with your mortgage company or your bank to work something out with them. It's not going to be automatic, but to work something out with them, um, whether you add that amount on the back end of your mortgage or whatever that they'll work out with you. So it's really uh, case by case, uh, contact the It really the is bank, case by case. We're lender. working diligently in the house to come up with a bill that will help everybody. But you know we have to look into our landlords too. That would put them in jeopardy if people weren't able to pay their rent at all. Um, so I would suggest, highly suggest that you work it out with your landlord or your mortgage company. Thank you. And, and what are you hearing from constituents? Are, are um, the concerns in Kingston the same as your other towns or are, are there specific needs um, based on, on the towns that you serve? Uh, across the board, it's unemployment. Um, I probably 35, 40 calls a day about unemployment and not being able to get through. So just as an example, last week alone, we had 140,000 people in the Commonwealth apply for unemployment insurance. So that is actually a total of 470,000 people since the pandemic started. Um, we're working on hiring more people to answer those calls, but you have to be extremely patient. It's been taking two and three weeks for people to actually get through. They contact my office and we can help with that. Uh, but where we used to get an answer within 24 hours, it's still taking us about three days, three or four days to get a call back to help people out. There are people that have been denied, originally have been denied, but that will change with the CARES Act. Um, the CARES Act will hopefully in the next week, we'll start adding an additional $600 to your unemployment check. And it will be retroactive, which will be nice for a lot of people. 
If you have applied for uninsurance employment and have not, not heard back, I recommend that you email my office, which would be kathleen.lenatra at mahouse.gov, and we can help you with that. Um, the small business owners, I'm hearing from the small business owners that have not been able to open their doors and have had to lay off their employees. There's some, there's some resources there too. The CARES Act has opened up a payroll protection program. Um, there's also a disaster relief program. The payroll protection program is beneficial if you keep your employees on the payroll for at least four months, that will be considered a grant. So you will not have to pay it back. There's a certain amount in the fund that we're afraid that will run out eventually but there looks like there's gonna be another stimulus package through to help those individuals out. Okay, well, thank you. And, and you know, I, I appreciate all the work that you're doing. Um, you know, be before we uh, move over to Sue and, and hear about what's going on at the rec department, um, are there, you know, three or five frequently asked questions that you're receiving that, you know, you can, you can take the opportunity now to address? One, the number one is unemployment. I will say your number one is unemployment. I have been asked people that are still working and they're compromised um, and they don't want to work, but they feel if they don't work, they will get a, won't get a paycheck. So if you look into the mass.gov website or look onto my Facebook page, it will explain if you are compromised and you're in an essential job, you can still collect. You do not have to put yourself in that position. Uh, a lot of gig employees, so our Uber employees, our self-employed, our waitresses, our waiters, our bartenders, um, even people that are 1099s are now able to collect in, um, unemployment insurance through the CARES Act. Unfortunately, that took a while to take off. Um, it's just hopefully be rolled out in the next week or two, um, which is unfortunate, but it will be retroactive to people. Um, another thing is, you know, why can't we walk the beaches? Why can't, you know, I get a lot of those questions. Why have we closed that? But again, it's social distancing. Uh, we do not want to overwhelm our healthcare plate people. And, um, you know, if we look at New York, we don't want to be New York. So I think as the Commonwealth is going, I would actually say as the 12th Plymouth, Plymouth District, I feel that everybody's really doing a great job with that. Thank you. And, and this came up on a, on a call yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. There's actually communities in, in Massachusetts that have been less successful um, with residents uh, really heeding the advice from, from the Commonwealth and the federal government as it pertains to social distancing. Haverhill uh, recently started implementing fines. So yeah. if you're caught um, not adhering to social distancing guidelines, um, in public spaces, uh, I forget what the scale was, but you know the third offense was something like a three hundred dollar fine. So, um, you know the the communities around us seem to be doing a, a pretty good job um, in terms of you know folks really uh, adhering to, to those guidelines. And you know while it's frustrating, we might not be able to take the kids to the playground. Um, as our conservation agent reminds me all the time, we've got so many acres of um, town-owned land and trails and you know there's there's plenty of opportunities in Kingston to get out stretch your legs um, in your own backyard and and mm. really um, you know practice social distancing um, Kathy I, I think Julie has um, something quick that she she wanted to speak about hi yeah thank you today at 1 30 Kathy is going to be involved in a, a economic forum that really is going to deal with so many of the uh, subjects that was Kathy was just talking about and Josh Cutler actually organized this and put out our email that people could uh, send in questions. And there have already been mm -hmm. probably 20 questions. And each one of them is Wonderful. very individualized. And I'm trying to combine them so that the, the like categories get put mm -hmm. together. But we're finding that people are really, really confused about what is available and when do I go on employment versus what is my 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 boss going to do and if he's going to be applying for this this paycheck protection act should I not go on employment because he still is going to pay me that type of thing so I think today at 1 30 um, Patrick O'Connor yourself uh, Josh Cutler and then uh, business associate uh, from um, can you say who else is on it Kathleen and and, 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 yeah. and there's a select person from uh, the town of Duxbury also going to be in, involved in it yeah so it's all about economics and it's all about 
um, the different programs that are available, and it'll be quite comprehensive. So I think um, a lot of people's questions might be answered, or at least better answered, um, in this forum today, which is strictly about Perfect. the economics. So we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Okay, Josh, back to you. Uh, thanks, Julie, and thanks, Kathy. Um, I look, I look forward to uh, watching that when it when it replays. I, I will be in a meeting at one thirty, but I'll be sure to tune in once it's posted. Um, Sue, I, I just wanted to jump over to you, and and um, again, thank you for joining us today. We've we've had the opportunity to bring on um, folks from a few different departments uh, for these updates, just as a, a general check in, and and to also. Um, let residents know how things are going in those departments. So can you just give us a, a quick um, rundown of how things are going over at the REC? Absolutely. So we've been working um, probably in the very beginning, the first couple of weeks, pretty diligently with regard to some of our winter programming and um, some of the cancellations and things like that. So we've been able to offer refunds or credit back to people's accounts. Um, just regarding donations, I wanted to share as well. So again, how great our community is. We had one family that had quite a large credit go back to their account uh, due to some cancellations. And they emailed me back and said, can you please take that money off of our account and put it in your donation page so that uh, a family in the future might be able to use that money for programming in the summer or the fall whenever we're able to unsuspend everything. So again, we've got a great community here looking out for each other. So that, um, that was a really good thing. So we're working a lot on that, on that winter thing. Some of the sp spring programs obviously have been suspended. Um, and our goal, I really feel at this time, is you know, all of us have been working so diligently on crisis management and emergency management, which is so very important to our community. But there is another side of life. Uh, and then that is one of the things that we are going to continue to work on is that we do need to remember to take some time for ourselves, have a little bit of laughter in our day if we can. And it may seem trite, but I think it's so important to remember that. And I think that will help us to continue to get going. So those are some of the things working we're working on right now. Um, not only from our future programming with our summer programming, planning, and hopefully late spring, but also online programming. So we've started a few things here. And uh, we're continuing to do a lot of those things and some additional training. So um, we're here and we're continuing to work and support our community and, you know, in a positive way as, as, as best we can during this time. Now, if, if residents wanted to learn more about, um, you know, what's going on at the RAC online programming that may be offered, uh, what's the best way for them to, to sign up to get those uh, updates? Sure. So through our website, kingstonrec.com, if you create an account on our website, um, you'll get our constant email blasts about information, new information that comes up. Um, so that's probably the best way. I'm actually still most days working in the office. I'm the only one there in the building usually. So I'm still in the office. So people can also call in and I can get back to them pretty quickly, email. Uh, but again, if they go to the kingstonrec.com, create an account, uh, we send out email blasts and text blasts those kinds of information. We also have a Facebook page, the rec department does. Um, and we also created another platform, which I can talk about in a minute, but um, th that would probably be the best ways to create an account on our on our website. And we, we also provide information from other uh, departments through that website as well. So we sent email blasts for the wastewater department, uh, the council on aging, the library. So it is a good tool to, you know, get daily updates or just whenever it's pertinent information that needs to get out there. Um, now, I, I am signed up for the updates, so I've, I think I've got a little sneak peek at, at the platform that you wanted to discuss. So can you tell us about the Kingston Community Fund Group? Sure. So this actually was created. We had a Kingston Community Fund programming platform for the last several years between the library, uh, the rec department, and the Council on Aging. And it, this was really a takeoff on that. We've been looking again, what can we continue to do to provide our community that will bring again some laughter and some fun and some smiles um, out there to families and people. And so we've created this platform on a Facebook page uh, called Kingston Community Fund. And a lot of our departments are gonna be involved, not just the rec department. And we're hoping to provide some different programming, virtual opportunities, um, just some fun clips in there. Uh, we have a tremendous sep summer seasonal staff and they are, a lot of them are college students. So they are home right now with a little bit of extra time on their hands. And they've got some pretty fun and creative things. We actually have something this evening at 7.30 with Pat Kelly, some of the families who know him. Um, 
he is great and he's going to be doing a live cooking streaming show. So that will be pretty fun, I'm sure. But there's a lot of other things on there. So again, it's Kingston Community Fund platform. We've reached out to our animal control and they may be putting something out there. Um, so we're excited about that. The other opportunity is again through the website. We're going to be doing some virtual programming. We have two programs up and running right now. One is a karate program and another will be a puppet show for families next week. So we'll continue to add those kinds of things. But the Kingston Community Fund platform, it will be fun. There will be residents that will be able to send things to our administrator and we can post them um, you know, when applicable. We've got a couple of kids. We had a Thursday trick shot yesterday. So there's a lot of, there'll be a lot of fun and laughter on that page. And, and as a parent who's um, you know, trying to maintain a 40-hour 40, 40 work week from home with a, an active five-year-old, we certainly appreciate um, any of those online uh, programs. I know Saul's tuned in a few times now to see Big Ryan uh, do story time. He's, he's a frequent flyer at the Kingston Public Library. Right. So um, you know, we'll be sure to monitor the Kingston Community Fund page at our house um, so we can, we can get him in front of the, uh, the screen for that puppet show. Um, Sue, I, I really appreciate you uh, coming on and, and letting us know what's going on at the rec. Um, I, I think Julie may have a few questions that have come in, so I'm going to turn it back over to her. Sure. Thank you. Hi. Thank you, Josh. Yes, we do have a few. One of them is about um, wearing masks, or we should say face coverings, in, in public. Um, since it was recommended that not you don't have to do it, but it was recommended last weekend uh, by Dr. Fauci that wearing masks in public is probably a good idea. I've noticed, and a lot of the people have noticed, that when you go into a supermarket or a pharmacy, there's a lot of people that do have masks, and there's a number of people who don't. Um, are people allowed to say anything to those who don't? I don't know who wants to take this. <laughs> that, that almost seems like um, more of a, a, a social uh, guideline question. I'm, I'm not quite sure that there's a way to enforce it. Um, you know, I think like any behavior, if you saw somebody, um, you know, drop their McDonald's wrapper in a parking lot, um, you know, would you say something to them? Some people might, some people might not. Um, but, you know, it's certainly not advised uh, to litter. And those of us who, who want to live in a, um, you know, a healthy and, and bucolic community like Kingston would, would probably, um, you know, smirk or, 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 you know, in our heads chastise somebody who did something like that. Um, obviously, we're dealing with a public health crisis, so the stakes are a little bit higher. Um, I, I certainly view that as a personal preference. Um, I know, you know, I've I've been at the post office for work, and um, you know, I have made a point uh, to to let folks know what's posted on the door. Um, you know, I was I was recently in a uh, in a post office, not the Kingston post office, uh, but in a post office that had asked that only two people be in the. Um, the entryway at a time. And, you know, when, when the line started to form, I, I directed the third person in line to the sign on the door and everybody sort of read it and, and you know, went back out to their vehicles until somebody exited. Um, you know, the stakes are high. Um, you know, there's a huge, huge, huge level of personal responsibility that we all carry um, every time we leave our house, given what's going on. Um, you know, it's a personal choice to wash your hands. It's a personal choice to social distance. And it's a personal choice to wear a face covering um, but that personal choice that you make not only protects you, it protects everybody in your community. So um, I, I don't think there's a hard and fast rule. And I certainly would you know, defer to Adam, Sue, or Kathy if they have strong feelings on this. Um, but you know, if, if, um, if, if you're out in public and, and you know, somebody's not wearing a face mask, um, you know, maybe you can let them know where they can find one or where they can make one or how they can make one. I think the only thing that I would add as well, um, Josh, I think that's great feedback, but I think that going off of all of that, I think we just all need to remember to honor who we are and what feels good for us and what feels comfortable. It goes back to a little bit what Adam said earlier. There are a lot of different kinds of information out there and we need to take what is good for us. And I think that in our community, we are really good about doing that. So most times if Again, you're kind of honoring if it's something that you feel that you need to say to somebody, then I think that that gives you that opportunity to do that. And if you're not comfortable, then you shouldn't. And that going back to what Josh said, I, I think that it is definitely a personal situation, but be true to yourself and honor what feels good for you. Adam, did you have Thanks, anything Sarah. to add to that or Kathy? Adam? I would say if you are going to approach someone, just 
do it in a kind way. Right. Um, you, you, again, piggybacking off of what Sue and Josh said, you don't know people's circumstances. They may not have a mask. They may not know where to get a mask. Um, so if you do choose to approach someone, please do it in a kind way. Adam, anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. I think all three of them hit it right, uh, hit the nail right on the head is, you know, if, if you do feel that you want to speak up, you know, be cordial, be nice, take everybody's feelings into account because tensions are high right now. We see it all the time. Everybody's tensions are high. Mm -hmm. um, and to do something in a kind way, I think would go a long way. It, it, like Kathy said, they may not have uh, the ability to get a mask or know where to get one or may have just forgotten to put it on. I mean, everybody's minds are kind of all over the place right now. And, you know, it may be just a question of reminding somebody, hey, you really should have the mask on. And that may have to be all it takes. Excellent. There's one other question about um, media and, and who to listen to. And the fact that on a national level, there's things that are very different that are talked about on an international level, on a state level, and then down to the, the actual town level. I don't know who wants to take this on, but how much of the information that is international or national or even on a statewide level is applicable really to the town of Kingston? Who wants to take that? Do you want me to take that? Sure. Sure. I'll start. I'll start. <laughs> um, I would, so, you know, there's fear out there and there's facts out there. And I would prefer that if everybody listened to the facts, and not the fear. We don't want to be fearful on this. We just want to be informed. The professional, you know, Governor Baker has been doing an amazing job. I feel he has a press conference every day. He has experts on that press conference. I believe that you can trust him and listen to that. How applicable that is to Kingston, I think it's very applicable. I, they do deal with um, some city issues, but again, it, it's all applicable in the Commonwealth. On the national level, um, I don't see a, a press conference every day on that, to be honest. I, I'm more concerned about the Commonwealth, so I do listen to Governor Baker, and I will have a breakdown of his press conference every day on my Facebook page, if that's more helpful. But stick to people that are professionals, not everybody that has their Facebook MD, is my advice. Sure, and, and I just want to stress again, um, the Town of Kingston's website provides links to uh, the CDC and the, the Mass Department of Public Health. Um, folks who've been monitoring this as closely as, as you know, some of us in town have, um, have certainly seen that the advice that's given even from those bodies changes. Um, you know, they're, they're currently constantly studying, um, you know, COVID-19 how it's transmitted, they're learning new things every single week. Um, and the advice that's being given um, day to day is based on the best information that is at hand. Um, as that information changes, as that information develops, as they learn more things about coronavirus, um, those recommendations may change. And we saw it recently with the, the use of face masks. Um, we've seen it in terms of how this is transmitted, how long it could possibly be airborne. Um, you know, I, I certainly would advise folks to go to those websites for information. Mass Department of Public Health um, is, is just a great resource. Um, I've had friends who, who've had um, relatives within their house who are, are recovering from COVID-19, and we've been able to direct them to resources um, pertaining specifically to how do you support somebody within your house who's, who's uh, tested positive? How do you make sure that the others in your house um, are safe, um, or at least at a, a um, uh, less of decreasing the likelihood um, that they'll contract uh, COVID-19 uh, when cohabitating with somebody who they're, they're helping care for, uh, who has it. So uh, CDC's website, uh, Department of Public Health website are, are great resources. And, and even at the local level, um, you know, we're making decisions every day based on the information that we have. Um, we're making the best decisions based on the information that we have, and that information does change. Um, and, and as a result, you know, guidance and decisions that we make, um, you know, may not be etched in stone. Um, as, as we learn more, as the state learns more, as the federal government learns more, um, hopefully our ability to respond and contain uh, COVID-19 um, will increase. We'll be better equipped to do those things. But 
the um, the day to day guidance may may change. And I think um, you know we we all sort of need to accept that um, even from those sources, uh, DPH and CDC, um, you know things things are constantly changing and it's a moving target. Gotcha. Um, there's one other question about testing. Um, and it's to, not only to test whether or not people have it, but the, more important that we're getting a lot of questions from all our towns about people that have already had it and maybe didn't know they had it. So the test for the antibodies. Uh, Kathleen, Kathy, do you, have you heard anything or Adam about when that test will be available so that the people who've actually gotten over it and now are immune to it uh, will at least have that information? Adam, did you? No, we have not heard anything on our end. I haven't heard when that will be available yet either. Okay. So the testing is basically just day by day. If we get updates, we'll get updates. Okay. Um, Josh, that's all the questions I had today. Back to you. Great. Um, just a again, I don't know, Sue, Kathy, or Adam, if you guys have any uh, final thoughts before we end today's update. Um, I'll go, I, you know, I'll just say one thing again, kind of focusing on what we were just talking about with the information and how much information and where should we get information. I think that is all extremely important to be updated and to continue to, you know, be aware of what's going on. Um, and again, not to belittle the situation, but we do have to live our lives. And I think that that, especially at this time, is so important as well is to you know get the information that you need for the day and then also then to continue on with your life in moving forward and appreciating where we have and again it's not to simplify but with anxiety and people's concerns and just everything running so high just just a friendly reminder just to take care of yourselves um, create some laughter in your life if you can and that will be just so important on a day-to-day -day basis for all of us to Take a deep breath and remember that um, spring is coming and the flowers are coming and the birds. And again, it doesn't sound simple, but really in this time, it is very, very, very important for all of us, I think. So hopefully we can all continue to do that as well. Great. Thank you, Sue. Um, you know, he headline stress disorder is something that we've talked about in our house. And, and you know, it's important to know what's going on in the world. It's important to know what's going on in your community. Um, but, you know, as you said, you know, it's, it's also important to tune it out and uh, go outside, listen to the birds. Um, and, and at our house, we've been playing wiffle ball with, uh, with our five-year-olds. So, you know, it's, it's uh, finding that balance and making sure that we are, we're all, you know, taking care of ourselves and our family and, and you know, ultimately our community. Um, with that, I, I just want to leave, um, you know, everybody uh, with a reminder. Um, confirmed cases of COVID-19 are on the rise in Plymouth County. Again, yesterday we saw an increase of 180 cases um, at the county level. Um, and, and just a friendly reminder, this is a crucial time for infection control, uh, maintaining social distancing, limiting exposure to others, avoiding crowded places, and vigilant hand washing are vital if we're going to slow and stop the spread of COVID-19. Um, Julie, that's all I have, and I, I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you, Josh, and um, thanks for that update too. And it, it, it is potentially really good good news if you read, if you look at the international and national news regarding how this is working. Social distancing is working. All the things that we've put in place that we're all trying to follow to the best of our ability is actually making a difference. And it's important for all of us to continue to do that. And you all have said that a number of times today. Again, to remind you that at 1.30 today, uh, PAC-TV will be presenting an economic forum. Um, it'll be on the Duxbury's um, government channel. It'll also be on our prime channel live, pactv.org slash live, and it will be on PACTV's Facebook page. We'll also have replays on other towns' channels uh, in the future for that, so thank you. And Kathleen, you will be part of that, so thank you for that. So every Tuesday and Friday, please tune in at 10.30 a.m. for the Kingston COVID-19 update. Uh, always appreciate the up-to-date information, and you're all right. You, you you bring such positive messages to all the people of Kingston, and I think it's very reassuring that they see that the town government just keeps working. We appreciate that. Stay safe, follow social distancing, and we will see you again next week. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you.